All right, frogs, dogs, and logs, here we are in Adobe Illustrator getting ready to do an inspiration board or an 11 by 17 poster. So these are some tips and tricks that I have just to kind of help you get started and to also help you finish when you're done. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna create a new board. And I do have tabloid 17 by 11 already available for me to use. That's basically the same size that you need, as well as the orientation in landscape. CMY color is fine. One artboard is great. Everything else looks fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create. So Adobe loads the 11 by 17 artboard for me and I'm ready to go. Remember that we can use the type tool to create a title. And yes, it does pre-program with some weird little language. And I can type title of my artboard. I can change the font and everything up here in this little uh, options bar that we have available up here. And we can change the font if we want to. If we feel that's a little too boring, we can come up here. And what I like is that it previews some of the um, fonts that we have available. So remember that cursive or very curly artsy kind of font is really hard to read. So you might not want to choose something like that. You might want to go something a little bit more uh, bold and easier to read. Now, if you're looking at trying to import some images off of Google, I'm going to go to Chrome right at the moment. And um, let's look up, let's look up the Kakapo Parrot. Since that was something that I talked about in my class with you guys. I'm going to go to images of Google and I'm going to look for a picture that I want to upload. Let's do this little guy right here. He's beautiful. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy the image. I'm going to come back to Illustrator and I'm going to hit Control V on my board and there is the image itself. Now it comes in whatever size it came from the internet and I can um, play with it. Now it's important to note that you can stretch and change the picture if you're not careful. So I'm going to Control Z to undo that. To keep the picture in proportion, Hold shift while you drag those little grips and then that picture will stay in proportion so that you can drag it and do what you feel like you need to do with that picture to make it bigger or smaller. So that's one way that you can bring in pictures. If you have pictures saved to a file system in your computer, you can go to file and you can go to place. And then you can find pictures that you already have in your system. So here's a green cat that I drew not too long ago. Um, so that one's coming in super big. So hold shift, bring it down. And that way you can make it a little bit smaller and easier to work with. Now you'll notice the green cat came in and it's on top of the parrot, but if for some reason I wanted the parrot to be on top of the cat, I just come over to the layers panel and I drop this down and you can see that the cat is located on top of the parrot here in this list. So just simply click and then drag it underneath the parrot and then you'll see that the parrot came on top and the cat is now located on the bottom. So that's the same thing. If I wanted my title to have some kind of a graphic behind it, for instance, I'm going to do a rectangle. It's always going to put the rectangle um, on the top of the layers panel. So just click and drag it underneath the title. So all the way at the very bottom and there that shape is now located underneath. It's super important to remember that boards should be very neutral. So trying to do some crazy patterns is not going to be in your best interest. So try to keep it neutral. If you wanna do a different color background, you can simply just use 
the rectangle shape and you can add different colors to the whole background if you want to. Um, you can play with this a little bit. Another way to get different colors is to come here and play with what's in here. So maybe actually want like um, kind of a yellowish or tan, beige, whatever you want to call this. So I can do that again, click and drag it underneath if you want to, so that then you have kind of a neutral background right there. So really that's all there is to doing this. You know, whatever kind of setup you want to have on your poster, you really can do that. Uh, what I highly suggest that you guys look for interior design posters or interior design presentation styles on Google to kind of see how we actually present information, um, be it pictures along with words. There's lots of different types of posters available for you online, but you can also kind of take some ideas from magazine layouts, uh, graphics. You know, the more graphics that you do, I kind of feel like especially when they can interact with your pictures. So for instance, I'm gonna do this rectangle, command, maybe, hello computer. And I'll do something kind of like this. And maybe what I'll do is I'll do a blue and then I'm gonna put it right underneath that cockapoo parrot. So then I'm kind of having graphics interact with my picture. That creates a lot of interest and a little bit of pizzazz without actually stealing the thunder from the picture. So find ways that you can go about doing some extra graphics, but without going overboard. So another one that I like to do is I like to use the pen tool. And then sometimes I like to create like some more organic shapes so that, um, you know, uh, organic shapes bring a lot of flow and movement into a poster. And that also creates a sense of emphasis, a sense of movement, excitement, something else that you can really kind of play with in terms of what's happening on your poster. You don't have to stick with shapes and things like that. It looks like I got a little weird right here. I'm going to bring this over to see if I can oops, play with this just a little bit. The white arrow will help uh, you maneuver as being just a little cranky with me. Stop being cranky. There we go. I'm going to just smooth that shape out just a little bit more. And then I can put the parrot and the rectangle above that shape a little bit, maybe. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do to add a little excitement. You don't need to go overboard with it but you can create your own backgrounds. You can play with what's happening with pictures um, so that you can separate them and have a little fun with making your artboard. So when you're done, if you feel like this is what you wanna print, come up to file and you, I'm gonna show you a couple things. So save as, if we do save as an illustrator, you can definitely save it as a PDF. Um, there's some other things that you can do, but um, saving it as a PDF is what you need to do for Adobe Illustrator. So just make sure that you go and locate where you wanna save this on your computer or your hard drive or your flash drive, whatever it is that you're saving to, and then come down here to save as type and choose Adobe PDF. Now to make a JPEG, which is a picture file, um, or a TIFF or a PING, those are all picture files. You have to export them in Adobe. So export as, and then you can come down here to save as type, and you can choose JPEG, you can choose PING, you can choose TIFF. Those are the three picture files. Obviously, there's a bitmap and then uh, flash would be for animation kind of stuff. So you can even save things as an AutoCAD drawing. How crazy is that? But for the most part, we usually choose JPEG or pings. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about pings later in the semester and why they are important. But this is just going to help you. So whether you need to save as a PDF or export as a JPEG or ping, that is exactly how you do it.
And then once you save your, your PDF, then you can upload it into your course at that point. So I hope this helped a little bit, guys. Uh, definitely, if you're having any questions or uh, need some extra guidance, if there's something that you want to do but you're not sure how to do it, shoot me an email. Let's talk over Zoom and see what happens. And to those of you who are not in my class, you know, just play, explore. Um, that is the best way to learn this software.